Welcome everybody to another episode of Antinatalist Conversations. I have with me Antinatalist Outreach. We sort of run out of things to say, but we're going to talk off the cuff and see what we come up with. Everything's already been said. I've made tons of videos. And I, we just want to reiterate that it's better never to have been born and that life is a burden and in most cases um, life is overrated and happiness is overrated and um, there's no justification for procreation. And personally, I want to act, be an activist for women that don't want to get pregnant and that's why I do videos to promote the idea that um, it's okay to choose not to procreate or not to get pregnant and um, anti-natalist outreach wants to talk about how religious experiences does not affect anti-natalism that um, in my case um, I've had religious experiences uh, that made me um, think about life indifferently but uh, I still would have preferred not to have been born because it's a life is a burden for me, and other people are a burden for me as well. Um, and everything is a burden, and it's terrible to be alive. You go ahead, Antonia Liz Outreach. Yeah. So, hello, everybody. Um, well. We, I suppose we should just talk about spirituality at first instance. I know we're living in an uh, increasingly atheist world. It's either an increasingly atheist world or an increasingly Muslim world, whatever side of the fence you're on in terms of which part of the media you agree with the most. But um, either way, the world is a changing, and uh, especially in the West. Um, and we're increasingly facing the question uh, in our lives of what the hell is going on here what is the meaning if 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 the religions are wrong what the fuck we have to change the script and we have to apply some new meaning to it um and what the hell do we do what do we suggest do we suggest uh the humanist approach that we are humans and being here having a human experience is good enough reason to be here um in my opinion it's not you know in my opinion it's it's not a good enough reason to bring new people into the world it's just, it's, it's a terrible reason actually because it doesn't take into account any of the horrors of the potential problems of the inevitable problems of the inevitable suffering death and just the pointlessness and futility of 99 percent of human experience okay most of our experience is just <clears throat> plain boring playing stupid or playing uh, pointless um you know when we watch the news when we hear people famous people speaking politicians, whoever, whatever we snoop into in terms of famous people's lives on the television, really looking at a small portion of their life, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour of their day. Uh, and the rest of their day is just as futile and boring and pointless as the rest of us. You know, they're, they're shitting, they're flushing the toilet, they're pissing, they're boiling the kettle, they're sitting in a chair, they're waiting for a bus or a taxi. They're driving, they're stuck, stuck in traffic, they're wondering what to eat, they're eating, they're realizing that they've eaten too much or that, you know, they, they should watch their calorie intake. Um, and it is just, uh, you know, a silly game, a silly game with little bits of uh, titillation for the masses. So we'll get and, a, and a glimpse the of, of these famous people's lives. And, and, to appease us and to make us think that there is something to to want to look for to to aim for, but re in reality, all these fuckers are, are are just the same as us. They're just hairless apes babbling around and you know bumbling around and and there's no real finesse involved. There's 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 there's, there's no real beauty in it. We are just 
bumbling, hairless apes. And we all, yes. we're all going to die in the end anyway, so, and there's too much suffering in life, there's too much, well, I know my birds are bored, and I'm bored, and, and, um, I think that, um, it, this, the suffering is within us, you cannot see it, but, um, it's still there, and there's too many people that, like you said, are completely useless, and we only see the the, the, the the highlight reel of their life. They're useless people, and the majority of people are useless people. And and even uh, doctors can be sadists. I'm sorry, I take, I take offense. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I think we've got to be very careful, Fly. Um, I'm not saying people are... I don't want to dehumanize people. I, what, what I mean is I don't want to attack people for just being themselves okay we've got to be careful saying humans are useless what i'm saying is uh i'm not saying that some humans are useless what i'm saying all human the human experience is full of futile moments i'm not saying it's all futile okay i'm saying it's full of futile moments um so you know from what you the way you were talking just then it kind of almost sounded a bit nazi you know that humans are useless eaters and, um i just don't want to go down that path i think it's even even I can't get that dark, you know. But what I am saying is, I'm saying it from a from the viewpoint of compassion and empathy that uh, the human experience isn't that great. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So what's what do you think is useful about humans? What do I think is useful about humans? Well, perhaps we are the only species that can understand what the fuck is going on here and we can actually come together and talk about a way to stop it all you know um ethylism antinatalism being uh the the the, the chosen path for for us and we, we think that's the right way and perhaps we are the, the satisfactory solution to a to all, all the all the problems that life creates. But they would not exist if if we were not born. Hello. Um, if we were not born, as if 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 humanity did not exist. Yeah, I mean it's a it's horrible here. Like uh, people don't admit it. People don't talk about it. People. That's... People, there's... I agree, it's horrible. And people I, will not I, say I it. And, the, and and you ask you ask people, like, if in a married situation, like, when their partner is present, when someone is present, they will not say they're unhappy and that they hate that situation. But in their own, uh, when they're alone and you ask them one-on-one, are you happy? They will say, no, I'm, I'm not happy in my marriage. I'm not happy with my life. And it's the same with... Unmarried people and and um and everyone's everyone is putting on this pretend facade that life is worth it and um I don't understand why we cannot come to an agreement and admit just admit that it, it's freaking horrible to exist. It is. It's uh, atrocious. But then. Unfortunately, there are people that will never come to that level of understanding because of various reasons, their psychological makeup or their intellectual, intellectual, I can't even say the word, <laughs> their, that's quite funny considering what I'm about to say, their intellectual ability, um, you know, it disallows them uh, to understand what the hell is going on and how, how futile stuff is, you know, if, if, if their IQ is, is low, so low that, that they're just happy eating a lump of cheese out of the fridge and that's all, all they have to think about, um, then, you know, they're, they're happy. Um, and same goes for people with emotional um, detachment, um, people with um, autistic, high autistic traits or psychopathy or, you know, traits where they're not so social or they don't really have uh, cares for the social world 
Um, again, they might be difficult to persuade uh, to question, um, you know, life. But having said that, there are a lot of um, Aspies and wonderful autistic people in, in the anti nativist movement. All I'm saying is, I'm not attacking autistic people, all I'm saying is the individuals come in all different ways, okay? So we all have different mindsets and, and natural um, ways of thinking. Um, and there'll always, there, there, there will always be people who just won't get it. They just will not get it. So that is a moral question. What do we do with those people? What do you do with people who just don't get it? Um, that's a great stumbling block for antinatalism because we don't want people to suffer, okay? So I personally take the pacifist view, I suppose, in that tell people, but don't do anything. So I'm not going to force people to stop. Um, how would you? How uh, would re- you? How would you stop suffering? I'm not going to force people to stop. Re- sorry, can I just finish? I'm not going to force people to stop um, reproducing. But, you know, the question is, what about the rights of those people they're bringing into the world? Um, it's, it's a great, it's a great, it's the great, it's the great stumbling block for antinatalism. And unfortunately, I don't see it as being something that can be overcome um, because people just won't listen. And it's, as I, I've said this before on Twitter, I feel so sorry for uh, future generations of such parents because you know this world will just be eventually home to the spawn of psychopaths and dumb people you know and people will obviously inherit those traits and they'll either be dumb or psychopaths or or both and uh, god help those dumb people man god help those dumb dumb people existing in that world um those people who literally um, will know no better they're, they're no no better and they'll just keep keep spewing out more more victims you know um yeah just some people will, will never never get it and that that is but very do sad you, and, do and, you and think the question do, is do, do you, we have a duty pro- to protect those people fly do you think that if the conversation was had it, it, it's answer that it, question it's met with a lot of ridicule, and you you are like one of those antinatalists, like many antinatalists, who think that well, procreation is inevitable, and I uh, uh, I think that if we had the conversation with more people, with men, women, teenagers, children, uh, and we traumatize them, and we tell them that you know, and and it's and it should be and it shouldn't be ridiculed, and you shouldn't be shamed. For saying, well, oh, fuck, this is bullshit. What it's like, it, it's like they're selling you a product and they're deceiving you, and you cannot return the product and say, well, this is bullshit. I'm suffering. I hate this existence, and yeah. and yeah. and it's and it's not just about you or your child. It, it's about the harm that they're gonna create in the world to animals, to other human beings. And and what could be worse than if 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 your kid turns out to be a serial killer, pedophile, rapist, and you're not even held accountable for the harm they cause, if they become a pimp or pet, you know, if they if they, you know what I mean, and you're not even held accountable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 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 I've, pers- I, I've thought about this before. Like um, in London, especially, we're we're being terrorised by teenagers. You know, the the, the we've got. We've got an extremely high murder rate in London at the moment um, with lots of stabbings. I think it surpassed New York for a while. I'm not sure if it's higher than New York at the moment, but there's a hell of a lot of um, terrible stuff going on with youngsters um, throwing acid in people's faces, you know, stealing mopeds and just riding, you know, all over the city, running riots and uh, stealing people's property, mobile phones, jewelry, etc., and just throwing acid in their face it's just doing what the fuck they want now the law doesn't allow us to treat those teenagers as as as, as an adult so they they kind of they're fearless because i don't think there's going to be any any real punishment they might go to detention center for a little while but uh, they'll be rehabilitated and they'll be sent back out into society so 
I really think, um, and this come, this might help antinatalism. We kind of have to push for parents uh, getting punished for the behaviour of their children. Uh, that might well help people uh, to, or make for people to think twice about bringing people into the world if they are held truly accountable for their children's actions. Which I, it's it's a, it's a difficult one because you know, biologically speaking, you can have wonderful parents and then some tear away psychopath son could be born and it, it might be due to mutation or an anomaly in their brain so you know theoretically you could say it's not really the fault of the parent in terms of they tried their best to bring up the child but then again they brought the child into the world and then there is, it is a possibility that this uh, would happen so therefore the blame does lie with them so they should be punished uh, for that, and that might be financially, or even I'd go maybe so far as to, in some cases, when there's evidence of severe neglect, or you know, um, I suppose even abuse that leads to the to the to the, the sociopathic child. Um, well, that the, the father should be, or that the mother should be flung in jail um, and punished, you know, um, in place of of the child. But I think that would. That needs to happen in my eyes. What do you think of that? Um, I wouldn't go so far. I would just say public shaming would do would do enough to deter people. I don't think you you have to punish them yeah, into but jail. Hold on a second. These kids are making rap songs on YouTube, right? They're flaunting their lifestyle. They're they're proud of it. So what is public shaming? Saying oh. You broke the law. They're proud of breaking the law. I so mean, shaming. I, that, I mean, you know, shaming what, the what parents. Is shaming? What's that going to consist of? I mean, shaming. Them wear, I said them wear shaming the like... parents. I said shaming the parents. So I didn't say put the parents in jail. I meant shame. Yeah, the... but again, we're, yeah, we're, but... Get, we're getting to the stage now where. Some of these kids, their parents are of the same culture. Well, so... we're not doing enough to prevent the births. If we do more to prevent the births, then none of this would happen. Yeah, well, I'm I'm suggesting uh, the punishments for the parents might be a way of uh, preventing some of the births because parents will think twice before fucking spewing out one of the little shitheads. What do you think of that? Um, that. Um, uh, I think they would think twice before having a child. But they they have a child and they they look at the baby. They don't look at the sixteen year old. You know what I mean? They're not looking at. That's oh, true. I'm bringing well, a six. Is, that is that is true. That is true. You people, know, they they're thinking I'm bringing a. Gaga and they don't think about the, the the fact that that baby. You know. Uh, that baby's cells are going to divide and and they're going to grow and grow and grow and grow and eventually. They're not thinking of the hundred, they're not even thinking of their child when their child is 80 years old or 70 years old or 100 years old. They're just thinking about my baby when it's... They don't think about the fact that that child, when they're changing nappies, uh, it'll probably have to have its nappies changed again when it's 80 and unable to move in a bed, uh, dying from cancer. Um, No, they don't think about stuff like that. Um, They think about the here and now and they think about the Disney narrative of oh wouldn't it be lovely if we had a little version of me and you half of you and half of me and we could train it to be like you and we could brainwash it with our own ideology and make it successful even though we're not and we can make it do things that we couldn't do and we can make it you know fulfill all our ambitions that we never got to achieve wouldn't that be lovely Selfish. I don't it's think selfish. I never understood why they would think like that at all. I never understood that. What is so great about what we're doing on this planet? You know, it, it would be better if we prevented more births, prevented you, more people from it, coming. I, does it come down to the mere basics, though, Fly? Right? It's the mere basics. It's the way men and women are wired. Men want to fuck. Women want. Women. Women obviously want to fuck too but um a way for a man to keep a woman is to fuck her and make her have his kid and then he's more likely to stay in her life there might be men don't like to admit that but subconsciously that might be a part of the behavior of the man as well to fuck with like fucking a woman like spurting his load in her owning her 
and then having rights to see her again because she's got his kid, you know? And the same goes the other way around. Well, we hear this all the time, that women trap men by having a child, but it just comes down to the basic animal nature, doesn't it? The basic I, I, I personally... Nature. I personally don't think it's about sex. It's not about sex or abstaining from sex. I literally think these people have children on purpose. Like, they want children. And that's the problem. Well, I think they're both obviously uh, related. Um, people want kids. People also want to have sex um, with each other. So, um, people know that sex leads to having kids. And... You, 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 obviously you can't have one without the other so well you can I suppose if you get a fucking test tube but I suppose even that involves an orgasm because the guy has to jerk off into the fucking thing but um yeah um it's um do you think you it's know, a way we, for a man to sorry. trap a woman and so that he can get services from that woman like clean up do my washing do my clothes Oh, yeah, there is an element of that big time because I've actually met people uh, who have admitted to me, like, they, they say they're in their 40s, maybe past 45, and they're thinking, man, I, I, I don't want to die alone. I don't want to, I need a nurse. Or, you know, not, maybe not exactly in those words, but they've said, I kind of, I wondered, a few have admitted to me they're worried about not having someone there for them, like when they're older, that they'll be lonely or they won't have someone to look after them. So they've actually thought like about literally just going out and impregnating someone for that reason. Uh, so that if the relationship with the woman doesn't work out, at least they'll have the kid who'll come and keep them company and, you know, wipe their ass or whatever happens when, when they get old. Yeah, that, that does happen, definitely. So it's a catch-20... That's, that that's a major um, reason for having kids, actually. Uh, you get that a lot as a retort... Um, from natalists, you know, when you say talk about antinatalism, they'll say, well, you're going to die lonely, you know? Um, yeah, and that's um, that's their reason for bringing new light, a very selfish reason, isn't it? Because well, they would be have to outweigh, they would have to make an assessment, an evaluation. They have to outweigh, well, am I just going to go through life without having kids, or am I going to go through life having kids and keep perpetuating this need and fear and 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 to have someone to support me and to give me a glass of water when I'm in bed and I can't move and I'm suffering. Um, uh, the, if, if they had a conversation about antinatalism and that they would see people that they're doing fine without a partner, they're doing fine without children and they're in their 70s, 80s, and I think I met this old woman recently and she has a partner and her partner is really old and she is old and she has children and her children do not help her at all to... Yeah, no, it's very, very common. Can it's I very, just finish? Very common. Can, and I, even, can I just finish? You know, these old people, like can the I children can't be around them all the time because they got to go to work and etc. No, and these old she's not working. In, um, can I just finish? Can I just finish um, antenatalist outreach? Okay, she's an old lady. Her husband's an old man and he's, her, her husband's suffering from Parkinson's and he's basically on his last leg and they have children and they're not being supported by their children. And she's an old lady taking care of a man with Parkinson's. And it's, it's, you're getting yourself into a very shitty situation if you have to take care of someone and be a nurse. And that, and, and you know, I don't see that as a bargain for women. And I don't see that as a, as an ethical thing for men to do to women and, and to children. And the children do not give a shit about the, these parents that are old and can barely walk, can barely move. And they have to figure out where they're going to get their next meal from. And they're not working at all. So, yeah. Well, I think that... Oh, in that, in that success, maybe, but I think that some of the kids will give a shit and they will care deeply. And it's terrible. It's emotional blackmail, really. It's literally the manifestation of Stockholm Syndrome. Like, these kids have been just thrown in, into this world by these people. And then they automatically have this unconditional love for them. That comes from just being born, and they didn't ask for any of this trauma or grief that comes from being the child of a dying parent or whatever. And um, 
it's a horrific it's a, it's another horrific reason for not um bringing someone into world because you, you're just your mere presence is going to create heartbreak and suffering for that poor child of yours because you will die one day and they will have to pick up the pieces and you know people don't think about that enough as an antinatalist, I didn't know how to react to this woman because she was telling me her kids are doing jack all for them. And I was like, well, in my head I was thinking, well, they don't have to do jack all for you. You're, you exactly. impose you life owe, on them. Actually, they don't actually owe their parents anything. Yeah, really. <laughs> and I was I thinking that. Evil, but so I couldn't really... It's the same as when my boss's daughter died from domestic violence. Uh, I sort of felt like, well, she's probably like didn't ask for any of this, you know, and what? how do you react in that situation? And I don't want to sound, like you said, you, you make me sound like I'm a Nazi. I'm not a Nazi. I'm really speaking the truth. I'm just saying that this is bullshit. Life is crap, overrated, pathetic, and 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 people lie. They're just not admitting that, well, it's fucked up. It is completely fucked up, I agree. Completely fucked up. And um, it's just there's just an emptiness behind all the stories in culture and all the fanfare that tries to celebrate it. When you... It's very easy just to get through that, you know, to pierce through this false facade to the reality. And the reality behind that is just suffering... An emptiness and pointlessness and and just uh, terrible. It's a terrible, terrible situation we've got here. Just look at look at the fucking news, man. Look look who's in who's running the world. We'll be run by psychopaths and fucking narcissists. And even them, even those megalomaniacs running the world, even they, even they have fucking futile lives and they just create problems for their family and their. Their co-workers and even they, even they will face death and, and, and suffer from the biological reality of, of being a human. Yes. We constantly, so, we're constantly, we're fed this narrative that we should be grateful for life, life is a gift. And they call it procreation. It's not, you're not creating anything. You have no control over the outcome. The only thing that is guaranteed is that they're going to suffer and that they're going to cause harm. And and, and there's this narrative, well, we're going to mold the child and we're going to brainwash the child and we're going to do this and do that. How many children have the same ideals as their parents? None of them. The times are changing. Um, yeah, what about spirituality then? Let's go back to that because... What do you think about all this God malarkey? I I still think it's better never to have been born and to never never. No no no! I'm asking you. What about your personal relationship? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a God? Um, I don't have a personal relationship with God. I don't have a God. I. I am an antinatalist and I don't agree with I don't agree with existence. I don't agree with human existence and I don't I don't think that there is a theory or a uh, explanation. Uh we all need an explanation of why we're here, but I don't think that God is doing a good job at um well I, I do feel like well I feel blessed in life, you know, taken care of by a higher power. But I, I don't, I'm, I don't think that um, uh, that that is a bias sometimes that I have. But in most in most cases, I am suffering on a daily basis, and I have been suffering for many years. Oh yeah, yeah. I made a, I made a, I made a YouTube audio cast once about this world being hell. Um, maybe you could provide a link to it below this. Um, audio cards if that's okay um and yeah my my opinion hasn't really changed on that one i think that um i think that uh the creator of this world uh, the creator of this world 
created pain and suffering for us and created us to experience pain and suffering and that cannot be cannot be uh, god worthy of worship in my eyes um so if 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 this world was created by uh, some type of intelligence then fuck me they must be uh, a psychopath you know um you know i've had uh, a few kind of spiritual experiences in my life whether that is um the plain truth of it is if, if that's my brain fucking playing tricks on me because i'm a fucking human and we all have brains that play tricks on us uh, that's a possibility um I'm open to that, but uh, I kind of think that possibly we are in a hellish place, we're in a kind of shithole of a purgatory kind of place where this isn't really where we're meant to be, we're not, our souls, if, if, if you think souls exist, our souls, our essence does not belong here, it doesn't belong here, we're, we're I don't think that humans deserve, I don't think any sentient life deserves to be here. Um, it's a trap. It's a biological trap. It's a physical reality. It's a trap. I believe, I think the Gnostics were right, like matter is evil. Um, you know, um, the physical reality is, is an evil creation. Um, now, whether that's created by, you know, just the physics and, and science or created by well it is created by that but whether it's also being directed or there's some foresight from an intelligent designer aka god we cannot be sure but um i have had personal experiences where um i've been led to believe that perhaps um there is a god and i've had the synchronicities you know what synchronicities are yeah, I've had you know what I've, are? Yeah, I've had experiences like that as well, but at the end of the day, I uh, think uh, No, 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 I know. I've I'd had a I've had a, a series of synchronicities like so Carl Jung used to talk about them. They're like uh, meaningful coincidences. I've also had experience of poltergeists with a friend of mine. So my friend was there as well. Um, so it wasn't just me. Um, but again, these can could be explained by physics. They could be explained by um, energy transference or the butterfly effect or whatever the fuck it, or some type of shared fucking shared fucking hallucination or something because we are just vibrating atoms and we can connect with each other and experience things together and who knows who knows what the fuck is going on you know me and my friend could have been sitting on that sofa and somehow you know there's a there's a scientific explanation for it but and that's the cruel. That, that's one of the cruel realities of this world as well. That uh, you know, perhaps we, perhaps we can explain things, but there's also a, a lurking question behind it all. You know, um, nobody knows for sure. Unfortunately, nobody knows for sure. Even some of Stephen Hawking's theories and Einstein's theories were proven wrong eventually. Um, so. Um, a hell of a lot of stuff. Like I, I don't think evolution, for example, I don't think that can be disproven. Um, but stuff like what the fuck was before the universe or what the fuck is happening, there's fundamental questions. That's where philosophy comes in. There's fundamental questions. But I will say, after that weird rambling rant that probably was incoherent, I will say that to me, antinatalism makes perfect sense because... Uh, it's an action of love. Um, if, if we truly care, if we are empathetic, if we love ourselves and if we love each other, then we don't want to cause suffering. We don't want to cause suffering to uh, others. We don't want to cause suffering to ourselves. So how do we do that? Well, we don't reproduce because we don't want to reproduce somebody that's going to inevitably suffer because that will hurt them and hurt us because we were hurt inside for causing the harm of another being. Okay, that's the way I see it. It's, it's simple. It's very simple. But um, it, it's it also that. it also can be very very rational. I can see a lot of rationality in not procreating. It's not just emotionally mm. based. 
It's very oh, rational. Oh, yes, yes. No, it's, 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 it's very rational. And sometimes people, people are scared of rationality. Sometimes they see it as like ultra rational, like it's lacking emotions and it's, um, it's, um, you know, that's kind of like what the Nazis were like, you know, they're ultra rational and kind of, there's an evil, evilness uh, attached to that. But I think that antinatalism has both sides. It has the rational perspective and the emotional perspective, like, so it comes from the heart and the mind, at least in my case. So, and there's arguments for both. Yeah, th- I think it is tied to well you're causing suffering to yourself and the child and and more more and and i think that the suffering does outweigh the happiness because happiness is um not persistent oh. yes and um well happiness who can truly be happy? That's that's another question. Can you truly be happy once you are awakened to what is going on here? I don't. I, to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't think I've been truly happy in a hell of a long time. Because once I think once you know, you know. Okay, so once you know what the fuck is going on here, how can you be happy at all ever? Because you just everything you think about that used to make you happy, you realize is just part of the machine, part of this meat grinder that we're living on is is you know you eat an apple and you might think oh wow this apple makes me happy but then you realize it's probably being picked by some underpaid illegal um migrant or there's probably like a, a worm in it or you know there's some fungicide or there's been some insecticide that's been used on it that's you know uh, probably gonna give you cancer or you know or it's just it's just uh, when, when you know, you know. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay, we've got over half an hour. Is there anything you wanted to talk about or add? Um, ding, 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 ding. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I am a little bit tired. I've, I've, I've been just come back from a long walk. So. What about I'd like we to talk? Apologize. Sorry. What about we talk about spreading antinatalism and having a sort of community of antinatalists, uh, like we do these chats um, and record them, but w- w- maybe we could be more uh, supportive of each other in, in ways uh, to grow the idea, uh, spread the idea. Maybe, maybe we'll have. Just happened. You've just given me a little bit of inspiration. Maybe we will have an anti-natalist poetry um, day. What do you think of that? Yeah, we could do a poetry oh. day. Yeah, or or a poetry week. We'll make it a week where people can just publicize poems, and you know, we'll have a may, maybe even have a. Would you be able to do this? Will I have a, like a, a page for it, like a Facebook page or something that? That people can send their poems to and just write, write, write material. We just need more material out there, really. And there are some wonderful, wonderful writers out there, wonderfully creative people who might create inspirational uh, words for us to to enjoy, but also to to really uh, spread the message in a powerful way that connects, that really connects. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to connect. You know, to connect to other people and to really cross the T's and dot the I's and get that little beautiful nugget, okay, that just works, okay? So every avenue needs to be explored. Every every way, every every road leads to Rome. So there's nothing wrong with anything that's anti it all leads to right, it all leads to the right way you know so i'm not going to condemn anyone for getting angry and talking about the depressing shit i'm not gonna i think if, if someone wants to talk about it in in, in, in in a fluffy flowery way that's okay too poems rap music songs whatever films the more stuff that's out there uh, the better because as i said all roads lead to rome so all 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 our actions will lead people, okay, so people like different things, okay, some people are attracted to listening, some people are attracted to aesthetics, um, some people are rational, some people are emotional, so we've got to just put as much out there as possible, 
so yeah, the poetry, the poetry fly. I know you're a bit of a poet. Uh, so you, would you like to do that? I think that's a great idea, and we have if we can get a combination of poetry or like you do drawings, you know, if we can get people to do okay, comics. Okay, yeah, we and can drawings. do a poetry and then another like, poetry, a poetry week or something. Yeah, and then a cartoon week if you want. Yeah, if we could accumulate uh, quotes, or it can be a short poem, or. You know, that yeah, that'd be means, awesome. There's no real, nowadays there's no real rules to poetry, so it's up to the poet how they want to formulate their work. So um, leave it up to them. As um, You know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what comes up. It'll be, be quite fun. But um, maybe Fly, it might be worth setting up um, a Twitter handle for it, like Antinatalist Poetry Week. What do you think of that idea? Yeah, uh, maybe some people don't use Twitter, so I know a lot of people write comments yeah. on my on my well, uh, channel. Might, There's some it poetry. Worthwhile, it might be worthwhile depersonalizing the Twitter and the Instagram, so having a, a antinatalist poetry Instagram account and, and a Twitter account, so that it's not just about me or you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Anything else? That's all. That'll be great. I'll have to upload this. And it uh, looks like Philosopher Stoner is going to do a recording with me in an hour. So I'll wow, upload you're, this. you're a busy lady. Yeah. I need to have a, a drink because I'm absolutely parched. As I said, I just did a really long walk. So I need to get my drink into me. So, uh, yeah, nice chatting to you. Okay, thank and, you very uh, much. keep spreading the good, good, the good news. All right, thanks a lot. Bye, fly. Bye. Bye.